Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today we're going to be looking at the definition of total liabilities as we do in each one of these fundamental analysis tutorial videos. I'll give you the actual definition and then we'll go on to look at some examples and give you a little more insight. Total liabilities is the sum of all debts a company is liable for. Total liabilities can be easily calculated by summing all of one's current liabilities and one's long-term liabilities. On the balance sheet, total liabilities plus equity must equal total assets. Now let's look at an example. For this example, we'll be looking at the Walmart Stores Incorporated balance sheet. That's where you're going to find total liabilities. We're going to move on down to about the middle section here. As I've stated before, the balance sheet of a company will always have the first section being assets. That's what you have right here. You can see that it's listed right there. And then as you get through that, you get to you come to liabilities. It's the second portion of the balance sheet. And the third portion would be, of course, uh, shareholders' equity. Uh, at the very bottom of the liabilities section, you will see a line item titled total liabilities. This is simply the sum of the current, let me get the tools right quick, <clears throat> of the current liabilities, which are those liabilities which are to be paid within the next uh, 12 months of one business cycle and then the long-term uh, liabilities which are those items which are going to be paid or come due in longer than one year's time frame. Once you get those two items and you add them together you end up with total liabilities. That is the sum number right here. Okay. Clean that up right quick. All right, as stated in the definition, total liabilities is simply the sum of everything a company is liable for. The total liabilities can also be very helpful for determining a uh, little bits of information analysts will often be uh, interested in whenever they're analyzing companies to see which companies are uh, more sound or, or uh, more liquid even. Uh, when you're looking at total liabilities, you can run a simple uh, analysis known as debt to asset ratio. And what you do simply is take the total liabilities, in this case, the total liabilities of 121.7 billion, let's round it up, and then simply divide that by total assets of 193.4 billion. Let me show you that right quick. Okay, for this example, I have written out the actual ratio, the debt to asset ratio right here, and then I've shown you the formula being total as, uh, sorry, total liabilities divided by total assets right here. Looking at Walmart, we'll take that 121.7 billion of total liabilities and plug it in right here, and we'll simply divide that number by the total assets of 193.4 billion. So we we'll plug that in right here. So 121.687 billion divided by 193.406 billion gives us a debt asset ratio of 0 0.6292. That basically tells you that 62 or 63 cents of every dollar in assets is actually funded by debt. That's good or bad. You don't have to determine that. You'll have to compare it to something. Compare it to the industry average or compare it to a competitor. You always want to use the same uh, industry whenever you're comparing it or a uh, competitor within the same industry. In this particular case, I've given you targets uh, information here. You can see total liabilities of 30.8 billion and total assets of 46.6 uh, billion. So we simply take these numbers. Let me clean that up again. <clears throat> Now right, we take this total liabilities right here of 30.8, we plug it in right here to our formula. Total assets, which is 46.6, we plug it in right here. We simply take the total liabilities divided by total assets. That gives us the debt asset ratio. In this case, we can see that it's 66 cents for every uh, of every dollar is going to be funded by debt. This is actually higher than the 62 or 63 cents right here. So in this particular case, you can see that these guys target uh, TGT is actually uh, has a higher um, uh, amount of debt, meaning that they have a, a higher ratio of debt uh, to assets. And if this situation were to go bad, or all of a sudden they were to have uh, creditors start calling in their loans, um, then obviously Target would be in more trouble than Walmart would be. So whenever you're looking for the uh, strength of a company, obviously less debt is better. And so in this particular case, you can see that Walmart is a stronger company than Target from that perspective. You can also simply take the, the decimal point here, move it over two spaces, and you come up with the actual percentage here. 62.9% is the percent of debt to equity, or debt to assets, I should say. Uh, and then uh, obviously if you subtract 100, take 100 uh, percent and you subtract the 62.92 percent, you come up with what's left will be the equity. Clean that up right quick. 
This information can be very helpful whenever you're dealing with situations where you have multiple companies, especially in a highly leveraged uh, environment, highly leveraged industry, uh, to find out which company is the strongest or, or the least likely to be in trouble if a debt problem were to arise. So let's look right quick at the banks. Okay, I've already gone out and got the data and done all the math for you guys, but you can do it on your own if you'd like to just get the practice in. The debt to asset ratio, looking at Bank of America to begin with, ticker symbol is BAC, it's 89%. Bank of New York Mellon, 89%. Citigroup, 90%. JP Morgan, 91 almost 92%. Wells Fargo, 63%. Obviously, just looking at those numbers, you can see which uh, bank is the uh, uh, less uh, leveraged and, and therefore less likely to get into trouble with the credit crisis and that type of thing. Again, Wells Fargo comes out on top, and it's one of my favorite banks anyway, but it's just one of these little uh, ratios that you can use to find little winners within a group that may not uh, be in as much trouble as others. Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.